to our um, first physical select board meeting in the last 14 months, seems like. And, 15. Um, 15 months. Here we are. Who's counting? I don't have to read the uh, statement of emergency allowing us to meet electronically, but we are accommodating the electronic visitation to the meeting with the Zoom platform. So if you don't want to come here, you can always still check in with Zoom, and we're going to strive to improve that um, interface. Um, before we start, does anyone have any additions to the posted agenda? Harlan. Hey, what's going on with those books, anyway? Books. It's about a year and a half. A year and a half. <laughs> I cleaned uh, the books out, curiosity. Harlan, and I didn't find them. I can tell you that. Yeah. It's down there. Oh, it just... Yeah, all right. So, um... Any others? No. So we have the um, minutes from the last select board meeting, which um, I read and they seemed they to be fine to me. So I'd move to approve those unless you guys have any modifications on that. I second no. that. Uh, we also, it's not um, listed here, but we also have the minutes for the special meeting that we had to um, set the water and sewer rate. And I would move to approve those minutes. I can second that yep. one as well. All right. All in favor? All Aye. Right. Yep. Um, I'm going to move right to um, um, Joan's updates quickly because um, she said there was perhaps some people joining in that um, don't need to sit through the whole meeting. Joan, do you want to take it away here? Yes. Um, all I need to do is, is to open the bids we have received for the retaining wall. Um, we've received three. Sorry. Um, the first one is from Mangan Excavation LLC. And uh, their bid amount is $56,321. Uh, the second one is from Harvey's Plumbing and Excavating. And uh, their bid amount total is $49,385.50. And the third one is from ECS Excavating. And their bid amount is $28,788. Um, excuse me, Joan, the, the, the name of the first company, the one with the $56,000 bid, I didn't catch it, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mangan, M-A-N-G-A-N, -A -A excavation. Okay, thank you. Is um, everyone out in the room able to hear what she's saying? Okay. So um, we're gonna work on that. What we advise the bidders is that we wouldn't, you wouldn't be making a decision today, so that we can uh, give these bids to our engineer Cricket for an analysis, and. Um, we have, uh, I think we said we would do it within the next week. So select board, you might want to think about whether you want to have a, a special meeting so we can talk with Cricket about her thoughts because, um, you know, the numbers are kind of very different. Um, and it'll be uh, something of a job, I think, to, you know, make a comparison of these bids and how they came out. And then what your next steps, how, what you want to do going forward. So um, do you think that's what you'd like to do? I can let Cricket know that uh, you'd like to meet with her at some point, or you could have a phone conversation, whatever you want. Yeah, we should get this to her and then and see what her schedule is like and, and have her look at it. And then also, I think it may be in that conversation or, or now is the, um, the question of whether we move forward with this now, or we put it off in light of the um, the other funding sources that you had been um, identifying. Right. Yeah, I think that'll yeah be a good good part of the conversation. Will uh, be whether you want to move ahead now or or wait. Postpone. So, um, is anyone out there that had trouble hearing this need any clarification about what she just was talking about? I can repeat that. Are you, no, I think everybody's again? good. No, okay, okay. just checking. Um, so is that, um, you said that's basically the gist of what you've got for us tonight? 
Yeah, the rest of it is just the stuff I do all the time that you hear about. Yeah. Every, so I didn't think I needed to go into that. Okay. <laughs> One right. question I have for you, Joan. Um, have you yeah. talked to Cricket about the sign package for the closing of the Bethel Mountain Road at all? For the what? I'm sorry? For the sign package for the closing of Bethel Mountain Road? Uh, well, we've sort of exchanged emails on it. Uh, the plan that Michelle put forward, uh, Cricket had a few comments. I think she may have talked to you about it too, Frank. She she uh, hadn't looked it over when I talked to her. I, that's why I was wondering. She said she was going to yeah. get in touch with you, so I was. Um, yeah, and I, I didn't have anything other than what uh, the two of you had already come up with. Okay. Um, excuse me, the signs that you're talking about for closing a Bethel Mountain Road, do you mean closing it to the big trucks that the problem mm -hmm. we've been having? To everybody. No, we're it's talking about uh, how how long of a time period do you think, in John? Two weeks. Uh, we're three. estimating up to three weeks. Up it could three. be less than that. Um, she thinks that actual construction will probably be two weeks, but, you know, weather or, you know, slowness of materials arriving or some other factor, we don't want to say it's going to be two weeks. It would be better to just say three. So this will change to the retaining wall. She completes the job when she'll be able to have one lane open, so it won't be paved at that point. Um, so um, that's what that's what we're going to be telling folks is is three expect three weeks. So that pertains to the the retaining wall project. No. no, no, no. This is Nason, the Nason Brook culvert replacement. Oh, okay. I didn't think so, but I was confused. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So, so it's exactly. an ASON Brook. An ASON. One S O N. Okay. Good. So. so that, that was clear and on the nason brook project on bethel mountain road we're looking at closing bethel mountain road to traffic to do the project all at once poor larry lives on the other side of that he's going to be a bethel residence for um, yeah the one thing actually i didn't see in the traffic no, plan which no, um, no. Nope. Uh, will we'll come up it only sooner, to. but um will be how the yes, local folks who need to get to the houses um Yes, will be accommodated. Um, would you say that again, Joan? We had some some noise. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just saying that the one thing that I didn't see in the traffic plan, which I know Michelle is going to have to deal with, so um, is exactly how the local folks who need to get to their homes in that stretch of the road uh, will be accommodated. Um, is there, you know, Terry on one side, it's and been then worked out already, right there. So those will be the most affected in terms of, you know, access to the spot. Yeah, yeah. In any case, you know, of course, they're going to be able to get in and out as they need to. It's just there needs to be a plan uh, so we can let them know what that is. So what specific stretch of Bethel Mountain Road would be closed? From, from the village on up or from what? All of it. All of it. For a period of time. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. Bethel is taking um, the, this opportunity to do some work on the other side on their part of the road too, so yeah. All right. Um, but that's going to make things go a lot quicker. And do you and have a time? I didn't expensive. catch if there was a time frame for this date oh, yes. or anything. We don't have them set yet. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it depends on when some of the materials can arrive. And of course, that's these days that's very difficult to predict. If I just said later this summer, stop in my article. That Sorry. Would be, if I just said later this summer. Uh, it's going to be this summer. We're we're aiming for a construction start of August first, but that still has to be. Uh, confirmed. Okay, thank you. Sorry to interrupt you. I think. That's okay. Yep. Alright. Do you have anything else for John? Uh, not right now. No. no, I don't think so. Thank you. Um, we had um, we had um, Kirk White and Aaron Lamperty as guests. Are you guys zooming in tonight? Yeah, uh, I'm Aaron. I'm, I'm here. Yep. Did you have something in particular that you, you wanted to talk about? 
Yeah, yes, Noon, this is Jeff Gephardt. Yep. Uh, Aaron and James Harrington are with um, Energy Efficiency Investments. Uh, we've been talking with them about auditing our municipal assets, which is uh, on the agenda under new business. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think there's a tentative date set up for that, I think. Yeah, well, I um, you want to talk about that now since we already started with your introduction? Do you have a date set for these audits? Uh, tentative date of the 13th of this month, uh, but uh, would like to uh, have uh, Aaron uh, walk through with the board uh, what services they propose and, and uh, how it functions with, it, with their company. Um, we did get a very uh, good recommendation uh, for them from Jeff Martin, who's now with Two Rivers Otakuchi uh, Regional Commission. Uh, Jeff was energy coordinator in Hartford when they uh, did work for them. Um, so with that, I guess I, I, I'm assuming, Aaron, you're going to be uh, laying things out for the board here tonight. Uh, go for uh, it. Yeah, so um, uh, I'm here with also James Harrington, uh, engineer with EEI on the call as well um i'm not sure whether how you want to start um how much jeff how much introduction is there any introduction to the select board of, of what the project would be or or is this, is this a brand new not to me i don't think it's brand new but i have to uh admit to uh being a little bit lost here i've uh just gotten back from indiana dealing with a uh, very aging stepfather and his wife and so my brain in terms of what uh, I have done and what I want to do may be uh, convoluted there. But I think that I did provide the board um, essentially with the memo um, that uh, you developed uh, June 9th after our conversation mm -hmm. there. That might be a good starting point if that's available to you. Um, um, yeah, I'd have to dig up the, that. Um, memo right this second. Um, I can do that if that's a, if you've seen that, that might be a good place to start. Let's see if I can just grab that. Um, um, do I have uh, permission to share the screen? Share my screen? Whoever's hosting? It probably won't I don't be know very visible to the whole room. Okay, yeah. so then I'll just. So the, the EI is a, um, a, a performance contractor, um, contracting co a performance contracting company, and the process, just to get right into it, the process um, that we would undertake would be to uh, uh, to audit, assuming you selected us as your uh, um, energy company for this project, would be to audit all your buildings on an initial level, uh, put together a menu of. Um, of options for things that we would propose doing uh, for the buildings based on both on your input and on what we see in the audit um, and that that menu would range could range as deeply as you want or as light as you want depending on what your goals are um, and then we would work with you to um, select from that from that menu what things you actually want to go forward with and and um, then we would sign a contract and um, the contract w would specify the work scope of the work, the and the the um, projected performance of the buildings uh, under the new the new systems, and that performance would be guaranteed, um, at, you know, financially guaranteed. If the performance, if the buildings were run as we specified and they did not perform, then then we would either, as I understand it, either pay you back. Financially, or fix, of course, fix the buildings and make them perform correctly. Um, and that contract could run for whatever time period uh, and, um, you want, and would could be renewed uh, as you see fit. So, one of the um, performance contracting I know is not completely familiar to everyone, but the idea of performance contracting at its most basic level is that the uh, improvements that are are made to the buildings. We would ideally you look for improvements that are made to the buildings that save enough energy to pay for the project, and then that that performance is guaranteed so that the project is essentially can be revenue neutral. Um, of course, you can look for deeper improvements as well that cost more, and those improvements might have a longer payback and therefore not necessarily 
be revenue neutral. So that would be a, what we might have called an investment grade improvement. And that's also completely an option. So all of that comes out of that first part of the process. Uh, that first part of the process is at no obligation or cost to you. The, um, the, the initial audit and the uh, and the whole back and forth of deciding on what it is that you want to do is is all a preliminary step, step that uh, EEI doesn't charge for. Uh, once a contract, of course, is signed, then you're getting into the money. And um, you know how you finance. There's there's options on how to finance. Obviously, as you know, you can if you if it, if the project is is essentially revenue neutral, you might be able to work it into your budget. Um, there can be leasing arrangements. Of course, you can go to your town with a, a warrant article and, and, and fund that way, um, and so on. Um, Jay, yeah. you kind of covered it? Yeah, that, that, you made some good points here, Aaron. Um, really good, um, especially with the finance portion of that. Um, EEI does help the client figure out what kinds of grants are available or work with Efficiency Vermont and the federal government. So. Um, for an example, we do a lot of schools in the area, and some of this stuff, uh, especially the last year, have been under grants for COVID and stuff. So we help the client figure out a, a, a structure of how the project is being uh, economically funded, being through a bond or grants or some kind of um, a lease to own. Uh, so there's a, a varied uh, uh, opportunities to look at paying projects and i think i've been working with eei for the last six years and um i think we've covered just about every payment plan option available and it depends on the situation it depends on the status of the town where they're at with their bonds so there's a lot of um, variables involved to make that decision process and one of the things that aaron did talk about is the process of how uh, we provide services and what those services entail. Um, EEI does performance contracting for a project um, and what it entails is looking at the, the buildings through a energy and a code compliance um, path, meaning not necessary as Aaron mentioned that your project would be uh, cost neutral uh, because there could be some ADA requirements or fire requirements. So we look at uh, the building entire um, the, the status of the building if it is up to fire code the plumbing code safety um, we look at the fenestration of the buildings we give you <clears throat> ideas of the status like windows and doors and what those would mean to invest in replacing them upgrading them and we look at the feasibility study and what the payback would be for that um, so we get really in the details of the entire envelope of the building. The building energy use is not just solely your lights and your mechanical equipment. It involves the doors, the gasketing, how tight the building is. Um, a lot of times we work with Efficiency Vermont. We do blower door testing. Um, we work with Aaron over in Norwich on their facility and you know, through Efficiency Vermont, we can determine how tight the building is. And if it's not, we look how how we could figure in tightening these buildings up because obviously it's energy loss. Um, currently, we're doing a lot of code and um, recommended ventilation requirements because of COVID. So a lot of schools right now have hired our services throughout New England, uh, Massachusetts, New, uh, New Hampshire, and Vermont. So there's been a lot of activity in analyzing ventilation systems filtration um, and we're looking at dehumidification in schools now that's one of the big things that really has been uh, popular lately in, in southern New Hampshire so EI does provide a no-cost analytics uh, for a project meaning we prescribe and we look at your buildings and we come up with a plan and not necessarily is it just one plan for a building or a group of buildings we look at the, like an A, B, or C option. An A being if no money wasn't if money wasn't an option, this is what we could do for the building. And then down from there, more economically, we address things that are, are more serious for the building. To um, like the C option was just get things to code, or address things that you the, the 
the tenant of the buildings would recommend that be focused on. Um, and if this was a project that you chose like a B option and then we had a contract and we went through that, some of the steps we needed <laughs> is look at the uh, time frame and how we'd access these, these buildings and look at the construction process. And then through that process, we do the select contractors, put it out to bid like we would if it was a plan spec. We do have partners that we work with, um, electrical, mechanical engineers. And one of the things that our performance contracting at EEI that's unique, um, we do an energy audit for seven years. So what we do for your facilities is we participate in analyzing and running like analytics on the building and how they function and compare that to the energy model that we have designed it around. And through that process, we can make improvements for you and have added energy benefits as time goes on. So we've done this with uh, a, a series of schools in Vermont and uh, New Hampshire. Uh, Virgen's is one that we've been very active with. Uh, Virgen's High School, uh, Ken Sullivan over there. So they've had a pretty good success on uh, energy savings and, uh, you know, for new equipment, uh, new boilers, natural gas hookup, solar panels, and uh, LED lighting. So those are some of the things that we look at as a, a building package. So um, for EEI, that's what we provide. And um, uh, if you have any questions, be happy to answer those. Question about the uh, air tightness testing. Is lower door testing in the initial audit or is that uh later after a that's contract. later yeah that would be and the lower door testing uh um that would uh be something jeff that we would do regardless of what path you pick um because that is a record that you can have for your your project or your building and it helps you determine what you can focus on so oh, the big, biggest bangs for the buck yeah, like LED lighting and or solar panels are some of the ones that give you the better payback, especially LED lighting. Um, not necessarily you're going to get a huge energy energy savings by replacing all your equipment. Um, you know, you get up to twenty percent savings, but it, obviously it's not going to match with the savings you get for LED lighting. Um. So uh, the audit is primarily done via a walkthrough and then an examination of our fuel and electric records. Is that, am I correct there? Yep, that's correct. Um, Aaron is part of that. We, we're working on other schools right now. So that's some of the critical stuff. Um, uh, the things that we like to start with is uh, going through record drawings um, of your facilities. Uh, getting the drawings, the layouts of the buildings so we could start doing energy loads. Uh, electrical um, data is all very crucial. That, that way we can we have a baseline to start from so we can do our model. And then we can implement um, recommendations to improve lighting, uh, uh, upgrading windows or uh, doors in your facility, and we can model that and review that with you. So all these... Um the initial analysis and then the recommendations that's that's um at no cost did the cost starts for the town when we start actually taking action on performing some of these upgrades is that correct yes that's correct okay um i i will point out that um mike davy one of our uh, project managers said to me but in reference to this meeting remind them to think about an, a request for qualifications process, which you are not, as Jeff um, researched, you're not obliged to do, um, but depending on the politics of your town, uh, it, it, may, it may make it easier to get funding should you determine that you want to do a larger project if you've got done the sort of due diligence of going through a process like that. So it's entirely voluntary. Um, and um, and it's not in any way changed the, um, 
you know, the, the, the you know, grants or, or, or fin, you know, things from Efficiency Vermont or anything like that. But it, it just may be something that you can point to to say, well, we, you know, we sought out the best company through this, through this state recognized process. Um, and here's the binder that they sent us, and here's the other companies that replied, and this is why we didn't choose them. And um, you know, we're, we regularly do that RFQ. Now, the difference with an RFQ versus an RFP is with an RFQ, you're, you're selecting a company that you're gonna work with, and that company is gonna drive the process. With an RFP, you're looking for the lowest bidder to do a particular job. With performance contracting, we're in the game for the long haul, and, and sometimes even are paid based on the performance. Essentially, are paid based on the performance of the building. So, so we're in. We're, we're, you're picking the company, and you're gonna. They're gonna. You're gonna work with them. It's not a. Not a. I'm picking this company for that part of the job, and this company for that part of the job. So, so that's why it's called qualifications. Or you're you're picking a most qualified company that's gonna work with you the best, that uh, it suits your project the best. And then, you go, and then you go with them through, throughout the process. Yep, yep. yep. Now, Jeff, do you have any um, more questions? Is that um, pretty much um, well, I would, what you wanted to? I would say, I, I would say that uh, I do have um, the contract um, for the RFQ from uh, Jeff Martin. Uh, so I have a good start there if that is something that the board wanted to pursue first. Um, my interest in this um, in particular is that scope of work um, and the estimate of you know where we are um, in time and in advance so that we are ready should infrastructure money become available as well as uh, you know, some of the projects that are underway right at this moment um, you know, high school comes to mind um, you know so at, as I've expressed frustration in the past that um, as a community, we shouldn't be making all of our decisions based upon one building that is vexing us at the moment. We should be looking at all of our assets to see uh, what they need and what we need to do to bring them into, uh, into compliance with our town plan, uh, our town energy plan. Uh, that frankly, uh, unless the board, uh, you know, that creates a different plan. That's really the marching orders that I have to try to uh, work with community assets uh, as we go forward. And that's, that is a long-term plan as well. I don't um, know why we don't. Yeah, you know, I do have the ability to the get uh, EDI, yeah. the uh, energy data. Uh, that can be done this week. We have a tentative date if the board so approves of July 13th. July 13th? Audit or walk through. Yep. So there. Um, yep, yep. One other question uh, about EEI. You, all, you mentioned buildings, uh, but what about the uh, sewer and water services? Is that something that uh, you folks are experienced with? Do you um, want them to also look at that? Yeah, um, definitely we uh, work with people that uh, do. Uh, civil work, whether it be sewer water, uh, utilities, parking lot, uh, grading around buildings for drainage, um, flood control stuff. Uh, so it, it, it's all encompassing um, like a design build process that we can cover everything that's on your site. Uh, even, you know, power pole entry, um, uh, transformer upgrade. So it's kind of, it's not just limited to the interior of the building, it encompasses everything that the site utilizes for a function for the building. Great. So, um, so we're talking about July thirteenth, then. Yes. Yep. Sound yeah. good to you guys? Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. The idea would be that we would uh, meet with, uh, hopefully, meet with some of the staff of, of the buildings, as many buildings as we could do in one day. Um, of course, we might have to come back for depending on how many buildings you have and ideally we can meet with some of the staff hear what their their gripes are about the building what their dreams are and you know it's really important to, to hear um, what how the actual work daily working of the building uh, is what, what they do to, to manage the building so we do what some of the, some of the yeah. stuff is yeah. um, also yes as uh, as james mentioned floor plans are good um energy energy data is yeah. firehouse too firehouse 
Yeah, yeah we're going to be a little hampered on some of the floor plans for some of our buildings given their age. Um, I understand. <laughs> And we do actually, uh, when I see Terry Severy in the audience, we don't, I have not had a chance to talk with him. We just got back uh, an analysis from Efficiency Vermont on our well pumping charges there, and I, I have to pour into that uh, and get him a copy of it to see as well. Uh, so we do have some, you know, we have data on consumption. We have some information uh, from analysis already done. Um, but uh, we do not have a clear scope of a project at this point in time, uh, nor uh, you know, a real idea as to what uh, savings uh, potential is. I think the savings potential is pretty big, uh, given the, the age of our, most of our buildings here. Yeah, so some so numbers that get thrown around just super roughly are if you, I think James already said, mentioned 20% for um, sort of the, the, the certain kinds of projects that aren't necessarily, um, you know, the deepest uh, energy retrofits, and then you can you can get up into forty or even fifty percent with a true deep energy retrofit. Um, also, well, you yeah. mode switch if you mode switch from a from fossil fuel to a, you know say heat pumps, you not only gain uh, a lot of efficiency and um, other benefits you potentially gain cooling, and I see there's some pans running in the back of the room there. Yeah. Uh, it just comes with the package. So, you know, there's some real opportunities if you're to make, not only to uh, uh, reduce your energy use, but to, uh, in, you know, improve the features of the buildings as we do it. Yeah. Um, excuse me, Dan, this meeting on June 13th is um, for EEI people to meet with some town staff people to discuss energy issues regarding the buildings. Is that the yeah, it's a, it's a walk through to in inspect and see exactly what we're talking about here. Yeah. Walk through, facility, actually walking through the facilities, yeah. looking at the energy systems that exist. And, um, and uh, gathering uh, some data in terms of floor plans and, and, and such, and, and um, utility records, I suppose. So, so there's a lot of prep that can go into into effect before the 13th 13th is just a physical visit right yes, yeah okay thank you so um we need a formal um request and approval of the select board to to um engage you for this um this analysis we might as well yeah you're gonna make a motion somebody I make a motion that we proceed allowing the building walkthrough and the analysis mm -hmm. um, from EEI Associates. Yeah, I'd second that. No. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, um, Jeff, I guess we'll be coordinating. Uh, you'll be co coordinating with them and in terms of specific um, time on the, on the 13th? Yep. 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 And I'll get the uh, energy data out and then. Uh, I did do a, a floor plan of the uh, town office the other day, so I'll get that sketched together. And uh, well, I think uh, we have some of the high school. Um, we probably have plans for the new fire station. No problem with that. Probably, Larry. You got a question here? There are it's actually there was just, an audit done on the library we, floor, so we can uh, yep. utilize that. Right. And see what happens. We have a we have a question from the physical audience here. Yeah, it's it's none of my business, but yeah. I don't know if you're being charged on a building by building basis. But the library was completely renovated six-ish years ago and had a complete That's energy what retrofit. Jeff was just saying that they um, they had an audit on the yeah. You know, you might want to just eliminate the library from. Uh, you know, I don't know how this is being charged out, but you might want to eliminate the library yeah. from consideration of energy there's uh, um in insulating upgrades it's i mean it's um, just totally re recently you know been refitted so. not that it couldn't be looked at i mean yeah but, there's some window issues over there larry that probably need attention well the windows but the structure the structure I mean, probably yeah. has been looked at pretty heavily i think in the past yeah. anyway but, but there is some issues over there but whether or not we're charged, we don't have to do these projects. We yeah. just get a kind of a handle on what it is that's av available to us out there if there is extra but funds. You should look up what they blew into the attic. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't want to physically go up there. Right. <laughs> we just got to fix the roof. Are you hearing that comments from the floor on, in Zoom? 
Uh, not a word. Not a word. Always so, on the board. Larry Strauss was pointing out that the library building has gone through a significant renovations within the last ten years, and and um, there is um, there might be some redundancy here. But then again, if there's um, if the analysis, this is not um, not costing us anything to get the analysis right. done. You know, if there's improvement that can be made. You know, now it's time. all I would suggest is don't physically try to go up in the attic. Oh, he says just, don't go just, in the attic. Just go look up the, just, <laughs> the volume of stuff that was blown up in there. Yeah, you know, just yeah. go look up no. on the invoice. I have, of what I have the in. records uh, from yeah. uh, Jeanette on what happened. Yeah, um, okay. It, it was an efficiency of Vermont uh, audit. Um, I mean, independent contractors do yeah. their audit, but it was through efficiency of Vermont. You just got to fix it. As to what was done yeah. and what was not done. Uh, and, all right. Uh, so, um, we'll certainly be sharing that. Yeah. Excuse me. In addition to the town office and the library, it'd be the school buildings and the fire station and the town garage and what else? Or would there be anything else? Firehouse. Uh, high school. 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 No. Nope. High school. We don't know. We don't know. But probably not the school building. That's a separate mm -hmm. entity owning we'll, that. We'll discuss at the high school. But, but the. Um, yeah, we'll need some direction. Yeah. Okay. Probably the town garage and probably town the garage is probably the worst of them all. Yeah, in the town office. In the town office. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Jeff. Do you have anything yeah, else that you want to add to that, or I think we covered it pretty thoroughly. I think, uh, yeah, you Nothing voted. We're going to move ahead. Uh, let's see what we uh, discover right. when we um, go over all these rocks. Yeah. Well, thank you so, for your uh, time, you guys. Thing that I have to the yep. other thing I have to add is that I have been asked by Pittsfield and Hancock to restart the Tri-Town Municipal Energy Committee um, so that we don't crash the way we did the last time. I'm defining everybody's responsibilities across the three towns. And one of the things that it seems to require is a legal notice in the Herald, which, is, which comes at uh, a cost, which I have no budget to... Uh, to cover, and actually it should be a, a cost uh, split by the three towns as we go forward. So I could use some guidance on that. Um, you know, it's not a huge expense, but it's another $10 and some change, 10 to $15 uh, per meeting um, to do the legal warning uh, through the Herald. And you said Hancock and Pittsfield and Tri-Town Energy Committee, right? Right. Thank Municipal you. Energy Committee. Okay. All right. Um, Can't just be one like So, uh, I need the board to think about uh, how we handle that expense. Well, like I said, it's we're not talking um, big bucks here, so I, I don't think that'll be a problem. It's, you know. Um, okay. Basically, what we um, need can we get the um, the text from you about um, what you want announced, what needs to be announced? Yeah. I'll, I'll put something okay. before you to, to ruminate yeah. on, and, and again, we're going to need to talk with the other two select boards as well. Right. Okay. All right. Um, we were just talking about the library building. Tony, do you have any updates from the library itself activities? Yeah, I think uh, the library is pretty much open for uh, browsing. All you need to do is call or email, and uh, you can get in there pretty easily. Jeanette says there's, even though they're doing it by appointment, or it sounds like an appointment, uh, rarely does someone have to wait at all. I couldn't hear a word Okay, he said. I was just getting ready to um, repeat that. Um, Tony okay. has just reported that the library is open for business, open for browsing, but they do request that you call ahead first, so um, to avoid any unnecessary congestion. That very good. To the public by appointment. Yeah. Open, open by appointment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't want people to meet up with vaccinated yep. people. May I suggest we thank uh, Aaron and James? Oh, yeah. And, uh, I thought I did. Yes, they can. Turn them free. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are welcome to stay and, 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 ex <laughs> and expend your energy at our meeting here. But um, thank you. Well, thank we'll you. learn a lot about your library very soon. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank, thank you. We'll read all about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye.
And the library is hosting a free Johnson & Johnson vaccine uh, inoculation thing on July 9th. There are posters up around town uh, from 3 to 6 on that day, and uh, anyone may go there as long as you're 18 or older. So um, on the July 9th from um, 3 to 6, three to six mm -hmm. the library is hosting a free Johnson & Johnson vaccine clinic, and anyone over 18 is, is welcome to come if they haven't Without already taken it. Without an appointment? Without an appointment. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you. Is that that's it. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, Cooter dropped me off to his research that he'd done. Uh, moving on to the highway here. Yeah. Um, gotcha. We've got um, in terms of a, of a new truck. He's got a quote from Mac for one hundred twenty three thousand nine hundred sixty seven dollars and seventy eight cents. And um, they can't order that until December, which means we would not have that truck this, this winter. winter. No. Um, Western Star, they're looking at $132,314. And we can have that for this year. In fact, they have a truck ordered, which um, has our name tentatively penciled on it. Not in pen, but in <laughs> pencil. Um, and the um, of course the uh, the body from Tenco is is just a little over seventy thousand dollars, which is um, the wing and the and the plow hitch. Um, so his um, well, one factor is the um, timing of when it's going to be available. He he says the warranty on the Western Star is um, um, significantly better and the service is closer, and that that's his preference is to. And go towards a Western Star, even though it's um, another ten thousand dollars. And we're not trading any trucks. Then. And we, he's prefer not to trade in a truck because of the the situation with the lack of of spare parts right now. That when trucks go down, it's no guarantee that we can get them put back on the road very quickly. And he's thinking it would be behoove us to. To have a, a, a spare. Did he give us uh, another idea of outfitting that truck with a plow, a sander? Um, no. No. No, he didn't. Another no. hundred grand. Oh, what? When you made the new truck? Yeah. No. Yeah, he did. That's that's um. um that's seventy thousand. That's seventy thousand for the body. So that probably does include a lot. No of wing and, for... and plow hitch, but not okay. a plow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it'd be just a two hundred grand should cover. Yeah, yeah. And the um, and I'm I'm curious if with some of the ARPA money, if um, the fact that we are choosing not to trade in the truck, he said it was they're saying forty forty five thousand dollars of trade in value for the truck. Um, the ARPA money has to be spent on COVID related expenses and I'm wondering if we can make the case that um, because of COVID and the lack of availability of repair parts we've made the decision not to trade in a vehicle to offset the uh, stresses put upon the road crew by the um, COVID induced parts shortage maybe we can um, offset that that trade-in money from the COVID. You I, like that? It's a stretch. It's a stretch. I, but I, it's, where are we going to do all this crap we got? We're going to turn the wall. You like that one, Larry? I drove him out of the room with that one. But anyway, we've got... Yeah, well, it's... Uh, I'm not into that. You're not into that? No, no, no. I, I think that... I think that a... ARP money or APR money, whatever you want, however you want to deal with it. I think we need to go slow with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, but I, I, I we really have three years to, to figure it out. But three I'm not years saying, to figure yeah. it. But um, I, so, I <laughs> well, Martha, you had a question there. You no, know, I just wondered if the um, I didn't see it on here, but I was wondering if you, the board, was going to make um, a decision about a truck, or you're just discussing. We're right talking right about that right now. Okay, yeah, sorry. I'm talking about that right now. No. I think we, we should talk to budget and finance about this too before we make a new decision on that. Yeah. Don't you? 
What do you guys? What no. do you think? Where are you going to keep the third truck? I mean, it's going to turn into a bucket and rust and be worth nothing. We don't have a bay. You can keep it in the old fire station. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know full of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's full of stuff, too. Yeah. Well, but yeah. that's going to rust worse than that old fire station with anywhere else. Yeah. I think we got to chew on it, too. Weeks. Yeah. I mean, How you're talking 200,000. The order really needs to be put in pen rather than pencil. Well, next week. Yeah, today. probably sooner than later. You know, but what if we uh, mull this over and put it on the agenda for next meeting? For a decision. For a yep. decision. All right. Okay. And then we'll to have some the conversation just, just and one meeting down look the at the budget. Yep. All right. Did you hear that on Zoom land? I, I just heard something about mull something over. We're going, right? to, um, d we're going to mull this over and, and, and hope to make a decision on the next meeting. So basically we're going to table this decision and, and um, confer with the, um, the budget and confer with um, other aspects of the question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. So that's um, Cooter's report. Um, Terry, you got anything on um, utilities you want to talk about? Well, I just got the report today, and I read it this afternoon, and they act, he's not writing us up for the pumps because they stayed the same. They're a little low, so, you know, might buy another year. So, you got a report about what? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, and I think... You want to um, yell that little louder for the Zoom folks out there? I got the report, a tentative report today on our spring walk around. And the sewer pumps at the tennis courts are weak, but they're just as good as they were last year. So he didn't write us up saying we need to replace them immediately, but there, it's, it's coming. coming. And that's, that was the conversation we had at and the meeting last them, week. I, to order them now, I bet it'd be could be six months yet. Mm -hmm. So when do we pay? When we order them or when we get them? When we get them. So I'd rather wait and see, have prices lease even out a little bit. All right. Because anybody I've talked to said they figured by fall things would even out and come back down a little bit. Well, well there's a lot of ARPA money floating around, so you may have a lot of people ordering pumps. It's an infrastructure improvement. It's a gamble, yeah. Which way is the replace going to roll? You know, because it was two years ago when I bought the other one, and it was $20,000 or close to it. So the new one's going to be that plus, and that doesn't count for getting them in, and we're going to have to change the wiring to them. They gotta, it's got to come out of the right. hole. The hole is nasty. I mean, and it's just, it's just, just yeah. It's you guys, just not the way it, you know. It can't be that way. That's all. Right. How many pumps? The two with the tennis court. So you got that? Terry's talking about the report uh, and the pump set, at the tennis court. Well, I got when we replaced it. He got a report on the spring walk around, and he said that the sewer pumps by the tennis court. Well, he, he would be considering ordering them. I got one downstairs. Ball, I ordered one two years ago. It took me two months. That's that what ball. he's talking about. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let me come make some phone calls and see what it takes to get them. The rest of the report was fine. Yeah, you know, just the. No other surprises. No. Yeah, why don't, why don't you do that? And then we can figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give I give them a call and see what it and, what they think. And find out how Because uh, I'm what I'm thinking right now probably next summer we're gonna change. Right. Find out just how available they might be down the road too. Right. What their thoughts are on that. Because they aren't making a lot of stuff, so I mean, right, right. now. Right. As far as availability goes, improvement down the road, maybe, who knows. All right, <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, dig into that. Um, 
So in the new business, we've already talked about the approval for the energy audit. We've got a renewing the Mascoma loan note. Um, you got that right here. Yes. got that here, but it doesn't reflect Here's the, the latest. It, you? Um, it doesn't reflect the latest payment because that's going to be tomorrow. Oh, you haven't made it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because we just signed it. Already. So, but that so gives you can, a due that gives you a due date too on that um, paper I just handed you. We can publicly agree to renew the line of credit, but we'll sign the, the we'll sign the disbursement request when it's updated with this new payment. Right. I would so think we won't that sign would this one. We'll get an, another one after this payment's made. Well. I think this is this is the one that she's finalizing, but that is if we make a payment, it's going to change, and then they'll update after that. So we'll get to sign this again. Yes. So we'll have to go through this again. Yeah. Right. So does it do us any good to sign this it one says now? July eighth is the mature maturity date. Right. Right. Well, we do have to sign today because I have to have the minutes and the signatures to proceed because of the due date. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. if there are any changes that can come after. Yeah. So I'd move to execute that. Yep. I second it. All right. All in favor? All right. All right. Aye. Okay. Yeah. You want to keep this? Thanks. Maybe something might be nice not to have one, but. Yeah, yeah. but we're, we're not done. By the that. sounds, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I just signed it. Right. Okay, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaking of money, the um, ARPA funds, on our last meeting, we um, signed Larry as the our ARPA representative, but as more information became apparent, it looks like one of the select board needs to be that representative in terms of the uh, authority to... Um, Sign papers and such, and Pat has offered to take that position. So I would move to take that badge away from Larry and stick it on Patty. Yeah. Yeah. So my first act will be to resign. Okay. All right. All right. First and last. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> we tried. Had a weak moment. Yeah. Well, Lois, could you refresh me memory as to what ARPA stands for? Um, American a, Rescue Plan Act. American Rescue, Rescue Plan, Plan Act. Yeah, Act. it's more um, basically more Welcome COVID relief us. money. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, I knew it was, it was American something. I second that? I yeah, I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Pat. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, Larry, you. for your um, your sterling <laughs> service yeah, for the last yeah. two weeks. You're still going to be involved. <laughs> yeah. You're just but, not going to be... Did you... Have you prepared some... Did, uh, did I miss your being appointed? That's what we just, we just did. We just voted oh. around. Yes. Are you going to use the official language of the motions? That we I, did. That I forwarded to you. Oh, oh we've oh. got all sorts of things going on there, don't we? Uh, oh, I didn't and see these that. Are re <laughs> these, are these are required for us to meet this coming week to start the process to sign up for it. So I've got my phone on here. Let's see if it wants to cooperate. Do you have it, Larry? Well, <laughs> yes. Would you like me to read it? I would love you to read it. Read it loud so that I don't have to repeat it to the Zoom <laughs> folks. Yeah. Please. Well, I can't move it, not being a member of the select board. But you, why don't you give it okay, to Doon and let him read it or give it to Pat? Did you fill in the blanks? No, you'll have to do that part. <laughs> um, and so I, I can act as the contact person in this second half of the motion. So you just want to start there? No, both, both pieces. Okay. All right, the first part says, and I should move for this, I, I move that the, ta the town of Rochester accept its allocation of Corona local fiscal recovery funding from the U.S. Treasury along with the award terms and conditions and assurances of compliance 
with the civil rights requirements that are requirements of accepting these funds. Second that? I second it. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. All right. I move that we appoint Pat Harvey to serve as the t Town of Rochester's authorized representative as required by the coronavirus local fiscal recovery funding from the U.S. Treasury to sign the awards, terms, and conditions and assurances of compliance with the civil rights requirements by today. Is it a date? It says a date. So put, put in today's sure, date. Sure, you can put in today's date. Sure. Yep. By June 28, 2021. Second? I'll second that. Call in favor? Aye. Aye. I move that we name Larry Strauss to be the contact person for the Rochester, Town of Rochester CLRFR award. Okay, shortened it now. From U.S. <laughs> Treasury. Second? I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contact person is your new title. Yep. So. Until they decide what else to do with us. Yeah. <clears throat> um, further to that, we will be, Larry and I will uh, meet on Wednesday morning to start the sign up process. Yeah. It, it's going to come in steps. But yeah. It's, um, yeah, we need to initiate that by the 15th. Right? On the 15th of yeah. July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're you know, ahead of it anyway. Yeah. 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 As far as we can be anyway. So as uh, my new role as contact, contact person yeah um you know i don't really want to talk too too much tonight about what this is really all about i've heard some great great well thought out ideas, ideas. on yeah. how to spend this money yeah. <laughs> hey, that's only 40 000. Uh, <laughs> um but uh there is a wide wide range of things that this money could potentially be used for and you know that's going to be a process that will play itself out um, over the next you know months but there's the I think the only thing I would like to just you know let the board know there's no rush for this matter of fact there's every reason not to rush right because these monies can be put in conjunction with other monies and that would probably leverage them in the best possible way as you know the state allocates their ARPA funds um, that these monies could probably join with to you know uh, boost the value of your funds um, say for a water or sewer project or whatever um, so um, you know, the money doesn't have to be allocated until December of 2024, and it doesn't have to be spent until December of 2026. So there's just no rush. No rush. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. And that's exactly why they're emphasizing no rush. They may have a state program to fund everything we need for the water sewer. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't want to rush into the stormwater projects because the state may kick in 100% of the financing yeah. for that. So if they do that, well then the contributing <coughs> funding we would have put towards it from ARPA funds, we could put towards could other projects, so. yeah. like sidewalks. Yeah. All right. or, or something else, or something. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> comes up so it will be a fun process so you did Spend a lot in your two-week tenure as the um as the corporate <laughs> representative oh you figured yes out a lot. i did <laughs> yeah i mean you, yeah, you got us on the right track thank you all right yeah appreciate that yeah all right okay that's good um we, when just one other thing uh we did get the the grant was awarded for it the generator for this building. Oh, it was. Right. So I'll, I'm going to talk with Vic and I'll get a hold of Jeff to uh, figure out what we're going to do. We'll take those three. We did receive the three bids and we have to figure out what. what uh, I, I'm going to hear what Frank said. Something about getting a grant. <laughs> um, we received the um, 
the grant for the emergency generator for the town office building. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So just to be really clear, I mean, it looks like we're going to get it, but right now it's a conditional approval. Um, because they have to, it's a federal agency, so they have to go through uh, an environmental review and a archaeological review. In this case, obviously, none of that applies, but um, have to go through the steps. They have to do that. They need to submit a survey for that. And sometime in July is when they're saying they will, you know, make the final announcement about the grant. And we will have to go back out to bid. Oh, we um, will, Joan? We'll have to do that again. Okay. Because the bids that we got before were really close. Um, they're too old now to use. So we can go back to those same ones, but also open it up to others if they want to, uh, to bid on it also. Okay. And this falls under the umbrella of um, emergency. This is this is the emergency operations center for the town. It was designated as such, so it did qualify us to apply for a grant for a generator for this building. Command center. The command center. Yes. All right. Um, we have okay. This. I think you're done. Uh, it looks like that's pretty much that was on our app. We have an application for use of the town park, but it did not make it onto the agenda. Oh, okay. So, um, what you, you know. What's the date? The date that it was, um, the date of the activity is July 4th, as for a voter registration drive on the park, which I guess that's patriotic on the 4th of July. Okay, and we've already approved a couple other booths we on have, the park, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah we did. The school repurposing, so I see no harm in Yeah, I would, I would see we're just adding another booth to the concept of booths on and the park on the 4th of July and chicken <laughs> barbecue. So I'd move to approve that application. I second that. Yeah. All in favor? Is that, the, is that the Rochester Democratic Committee that's doing that? Yes, yes. And um, Harlan, did you get your your question answered by Frank right off the bat? Basically, there's nothing to do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we did spend a considerable amount of time cleaning out the basement. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, 65 inch flat screen, yep. smart TV. Yep. <laughs> that hooks up. <laughs> yep, yeah. Because um, when you're sitting back here and two people are talking about stuff they could have done on the phone and you can't, you only half hear it. You know? Yep, but, no, that's the, we're working on that. This seat right here. Well, it's just make it that much easier. You know, if you had it on the wall, maybe you could rent the room out for a big Zoom meeting or well, something. Well, this, this was a test know. case. So now yeah. we've done this and we, we see where our weaknesses and strengths are. So we're going to work on, I think, two weaknesses. Well, I think it's a great weaknesses. idea. I think it is, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, we can do it better. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we knew that. Just a comment with this flat screen TV. The speakers are in the back of the TV, so external speakers. External speakers, come yeah. this way. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll we, still be hearing it, but we you still just won't. spent your money. And an augmented um, microphone so oh, that yeah. people on Zoom can yeah. hear yeah. what you're talking yeah. about. There. Yeah. 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 We'll no. spend it off for That would be ARPA money, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's COVID, COVID money. It's COVID money. It is. Totally. Get a better chance on that. All right. More than the Okay. So we're going to... Um, then resign uh, or adjourn this part of the meeting and we're going to move into executive session to talk about uh, some employee issues and thank you all for our first welcome back. You got it. Right here.